Well, here we are. It is not spring, and it is not even quite spring camp, but we did have the first spring camp press conference from Neil Brown. I'm Forrest Poston. This is WVU Football Going Deep, and now we are back to talking football. And, hey, I think it was kind of an interesting press conference. Uh, a lot of things expected, a few things maybe didn't. Uh, good news, bad news, and just news. Going to start with uh, the new guys that are on campus and will be participating in spring and position plans. Uh, not any of them tremendously surprising, but at least now semi-official. Uh, Boyce will be playing safety, Jennings, safety, and spear. Uh, Garns, <laughs> cornerback, deep safety, and spur. Now, Brown used, he used spur sometimes like it sounded like spear, uh, same position I mean, and sometimes he said bandit and spur. So we seem to have some significant crossover, and I am not always sure. Uh, but I think when in the nickel package, Garns might be playing the spur spear position. Uh, Hollis and Hollis and Joseph are both enrolled on campus and will be participating in spring practice. That is excellent news. Excellent news. Uh, Hollis will be at quarterback, Joseph, deep safety, and Spear. Uh, Crandall, cornerback, Onwuka, bandit, Spur. That's going to kind of be interesting because uh, it sounds like he could be playing a little bit of the Spear position. Uh, French, bandit, uh, Carico, Mike linebacker. And we'll be talking more about linebackers. Uh, Kinsler, uh, defensive tackle. And he will be playing uh, the boundary tackle. Uh, Gabriel will be at nose. Jackson, <laughs> he will be playing either side, boundary tackle or field. Uh, and I think the field tackle is typically referred to as the end. It's uh, the nomenclature is bizarre. Okay. Uh, on the offensive side, Samarco, hey, he's a tight end. He'll be in the tight end room. Uh, Clay Ash, and uh, I find, you know, interesting he mentioned Ash, even though he's a walk-on, I think. Yeah, he's a walk-on. Uh, did not mention any other walk-ons, and I don't know if that's just because no other walk-ons are going to be there for spring? Or does he think enough of Ash to mention him? He will be at running back. Uh, Bray will be at every receiver position, I assume with the exception of tight end, uh, but he will be mostly out wide, as you would expect. Uh, Bosley at tackle, which again is pretty much what we expected, although <laughs> things could change. Injury updates. There is good news. There is bad news. Uh, the good news, Miller, Lathan, and Trotter will all be ready to go in spring, full speed. He did not mention any limitations. And, of course, this is the first confirmation we've had that Miller will be back. Yeah, he's still been listed on the roster, but it is nice to hear it uh, spoken. Uh, on the not-so-good side, uh, Biggs will be limited, uh, and I think severely limited, but getting a little more as they go. Uh, Remack will be out for the whole spring. Taylor will be limited, 
which means doing not much more than running at first and later uh, doing more, but not in pads, no contact. Uh, he had, I think, shoulder surgery. Donaldson is still limited by his uh, surgery. Asani Redwood had surgery fairly recently that we had not heard about, and he will be out until summer. And, of course, he had recovered from one injury and was really just coming on in the bowl game. So got to get him back. Uh, Fisher had some surgery uh, just before the ball game, and he is still out. And uh, Gyro Favaris will still be out for spring. Um, so we do have a lot of guys who are going to be missing, missing in spring. Uh, <laughs> but we got guys back. Things do look good overall. I mean, we are not we're not missing anybody. Uh, who is in serious need of work. Yeah. Well, ta well, yeah, Taylor can be working. I guess, you know, uh, Fabianich said Taylor needs to work on getting in and out of his routes, and I guess, you know, he will be able to do some of that, <clears throat> just not live practice. Um, now, let's see. Some general notes here, and these are not especially well organized. Uh, they will be moving guys around a lot, which is fairly common. Now, one of the big differences this year, we got guys back who are experienced. We've got depth. So moving guys around is just kind of extending what they can do. Now, there is going to be some of this figuring out who works best where. Um, I mean, especially with Biggs and Remack both out, that leaves left guard really kind of in limbo for spring. Um, oh, I think uh, Weedman would be first up. Biggs would have been in the mix uh, there. So, who will be working at left guard along with Weedman will be interesting to see. Uh, <laughs> the extent that they are moving guys around, Milam will be getting work at guard and center, which I guess to some degree answers some qu uh, question about who will be getting extra work at guard. But I expect we'll still be seeing some of the, uh, one or two of the younger guys there. Um, and he did, you know, kind of kind of slipped it through that some of this for Milam is to give him better preparation for his future. So I guess giving him some work at things so the NFL <clears throat> can see that he can do more than tackle if need be, although I would think his future is at left tackle. Um, they challenged the guys over the offseason and made offseason harder than ever, uh, which I think goes along with having guys who've been there a while. So upping the challenge, saying, okay, you think you're good, you got to get better. We had a good season. We need a better season. Uh, Burks will be playing more at Spear. He did a little bit in the bowl game but says he turns out to be a natural blitzer. Uh, I think Floyd showed himself to be a natural blitzer, but of course, you know, Floyd had some other limitations. So it will be interesting to see how this plays out, but sounds like we're going to see a lot going on at the spear, nickel, spur, whatever it is. Um, uh, the people have kind of talked a bit about, um, you know, hiring an outside linebacker coach to replace a cornerbacks coach uh, or safeties. I free you know, <laughs> but uh, particularly wanted to free up Jordan to move around to all the rooms, uh, help him, you know, build more relationships with the overall defense. And also put the safeties and corners all in one room so they're hearing, uh, as he said it, the same language. Uh, improve communication. Now, 
I don't know if that means there was a problem with coaches not saying the same thing in the same way, which would make it harder for corners and safeties to communicate. Uh, or if this was just improving something that wasn't bad, but could stand to be improved. I like the idea. And of course, you know, he, for several years, we've been working at getting guys who can move between corner and safety. So it makes sense to have one big room, one big family, hopefully happy family. Um, so the bowl game has uh, clearly helped recruiting in the Carolinas. And uh, Cabral will be recruiting that area, which is the area he's worked in already. So he's got the contacts. So we should be upping our game there. Uh, on the staff issues, said, you know, he, you know, okay. Hiring young staff, guys maybe with no P4 experience, uh, yes, you, you have limited funding. You can't just, you know, buy the best, if they really are the best. Uh, but he also likes guys who are on an upward trajectory and who are hungry. And I think those two kind of frequently go together. Um, and also guys who had to work their way up. Things you really learn a lot starting down at the lower levels. Um, now, I didn't mention facing adversity, but that's always been a big thing. So I think it goes along with that, that, uh, you know, these guys have had to, well, he kind of mentioned it, you know, where you have to do more with less because you're working at a school that just does not have the money or the facilities. Uh, also said that the energy that Marshall and Stewart brought with them, natural energy, consistent energy, positive energy, really ended up helping the, the rooms on offense. Said it wasn't why he hired them. <laughs> I think it was, and he just didn't know it. I talked about that energy and kind of matching with Chad Scott uh, a couple of times last year. Um, but, you know, he said, especially now <laughs> when they moved practices to mornings, and this is, you know, first thing the guys get, you know, and you've got guys like Marshall and Stewart who have that, positive energy in the morning <clears throat> or some of us don't necessarily like energy in the morning pre-caffeine whatever um, but he did specifically want to uh, do the same thing for the defense since he figured out that it helped the offense and that was factored in with hiring Cabral so Will be interesting to see if that plays out. Uh, now, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> find the language interesting in this. Said, player he's most intrigued by, particularly among tight ends, is Dixon. Now, he did not explain what intrigued means. But it does seem that this is Dixon's year. He he needs to do some things. He's always had that potential. And we need another guy to step up as <clears throat> the, the guy behind Taylor. Not just a blocking tight end, but a second receiving tight end. Um, Dixon would seem to be a possibility for that. Um now, and we have a couple of other guys, you know, um, and I can't, can't remember names all of a sudden. Um, but Dixon would seem to be, he's been here a couple of years now. So time to shine, time to shine, especially while Taylor is on the sidelines uh, with his injury. Uh, now, we talked about this before, you know, last year, some that they did, you know, they were playing with two mics, uh, with, you know, Koba and Cutter. And he said, you know, well, it is simply easier to find mic bodies 
compared to guys who are able to really play the will well. So it's going to be more two mics. They're going to be intentional with it. Guys who play downhill, tackle to tackle. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be asked to get out into the flat or something like that, which, of course, a will would be uh, potentially more expected to do. Uh, so how we're going to play the coverage, we'll see. Um, options at Spear. And this, not all of them. Collins, and he said Collins had his best winner so far. So, hey, a lot of us have wanted to see Collins step up. After his freshman year, we thought sky was the limit. Uh, haven't even really got up on a good hill yet. So uh, Jennings, Wilcox, and that's one I don't think I've seen anybody mention, but Avery Wilcox was on the list. Burks, uh, and on passing downs, a cornerback. And, and hey, these days, cornerback, there's a lot of names on that list. So... Again, the spear, spur, whatever, nickel is going to be an interesting position, not just for spring, but I think it's going to be fun to watch what they do in the games. And I think offenses are going to get confused this year. Uh, talking about Garrett Green, said first of all, it's all about accuracy. And we know that short intermediate passes has to get better. Touch is part of that. Um, and, of course, yeah, if we want to see more receiving out of the backfield, touch has to get better. Uh, but he's been working on changing footwork and arm angles. They knew last year that this needed to be done, but you can't work on those things during the season because when you start changing them, things get out of whack for a while. And he said it is going to be up and down. But started this in January. We get to work on it up until August. <laughs> so uh, time to go up and down and then settle on up. <laughs> we hope and expect. Uh, Nico Marchio uh, said he's going to be getting a lot of first team reps. Uh, and of course, you know, green is the starter. We do not have a competition going into camp. Green is the starter, uh, but Mark Hill is expected to play. Uh, and, you know, we will, you know, Brown has already said, hey, somewhere in this season, we are going to need Mark Hill to step up for one reason or another and, and win a game or two. Uh, but, you know, he said Mark Hill is more comfortable, more confident which is allowing him to play more freely. And, of course, that is, that's what you got to do. You know, so, that, you know, uh, the primary things working on, and this really hasn't changed, pre-snap identification and post-snap decision-making. But once you get that comfort level, you are able to do those things faster and even though you're doing them faster, you can do them without being hurried. And I think we saw that with Mark Eole. There were times when he was kind of out of sync. So sounds like he's moved past that. And that could be a very, very good thing. Um, let's see. A few other things to mention that I did not make cards for uh, let's see here. Uh, is it Bosley has improved his body significantly since they were looking at him uh, in his junior year in high school, uh, back when they, they just, he was a preferred walk-on offer, not a scholarship. That's why I went to Jacksonville state. Um, but now he's yeah, worked there ready. Still needs to get stronger, but will be in the mix at tackle. Um, let's see. So particularly excited about Corey McIntyre. He's got twitch. Has worked very hard. He's going to be in the mix. Going to help somewhere down the line. 
uh, still feels like they are one class away from where they really need to be on the defensive line as they try to switch to a slightly different defensive scheme. But that is not to say they aren't looking really good. Um, let's see. Well, I do think that covers the things that I made notes on during the press conference. Um, now, you did say there'll be you'll be seeing a lot of changes in the uh, body composition and weights. Thinks that the players and staff did a particularly good job over the winter. And, of course, they've really worked to improve the nutrition, uh, the, the psychology, and the weight room. So, uh, um, also, I have had changed some things. Said one reason for starting a week late, which means taking a week after spring break before starting practice. Uh, last couple of years, they've had soft tissue injuries and suspect that it was from the timing of when they started practice. So he and Joseph talked it over and decided to you know, have that week after spring break and then start. And they are going, you know, have had too many serious injuries as well lately in spring. So they are going to be working, you know, to prevent that in terms of what they can do and you know, trying to keep the players uh, aware of these things and, you know, <laughs> take a little responsibility. Uh, let's see. Ah, yeah, I did have a couple of other notes. Uh, basically, Springs finding out who they can count on, uh, whether or not they do need to move guys to other positions, and figuring out some of the sub packages. Okay, uh, spring practice. Starts on Monday. I do not know uh, what the you know how things are going to work in terms of post practice press conferences. Uh, how often Brown will do that? Whether or not we will get to hear from any players, assistant coaches, that sort of thing. Um, now Brown did say he's going to be more involved in social media after being away from it for a while. And actually, what I found potentially interesting said they're going to be doing uh, a lot more with behind the scenes, uh, with you know some players and with some of the staff. Uh, you know, I mean, and not coaching staff. Well, I suppose it could be some of the uh, analysts and the type we don't usually see. But yeah, I said, you know, should be you know seeing, hearing from whatever. Uh, some of the background people that we have not uh, gotten familiar with in the past. I don't know exactly how that's going to play out. I don't know if he knows how that's exact how that's exactly going to play out. But I'm looking forward to it. All right. I am excited. Uh, I think I still need some caffeine because I got to run errands. But I am going to say thank you. Please subscribe, make comments, click that thumbs up button, uh, share and tell your friends, and let's keep this channel rolling, and I will see you later. As soon as I can find all of the buttons so I can click and sign.